Welcome to You Make the Difference. I'm Wanda Walker and today I have as my guest Pastor Alex Montgomery. Pastor Alex is the pastor of Grace Covenant Worship Center in Hogansville. And today we're going to talk about how to deal with defeat when others are victorious. So I, it's pretty tough, isn't it, Pastor Alex? It's very difficult, Wanda, when other people seem like they're prospering and they're getting ahead and they're seeing breakthroughs and they have a wonderful testimony. And I see so many people every Sunday who sit back and say, what about me? I know. Why am I not breaking through? What did I do wrong? What did I leave out in my prayers? I probably should have given more. I should have been kinder. I know God's unhappy with me. All these kind of statements we hear consistently. And then the end result of that ends up being that they're kind of condemned. They're comparing themselves among themselves and not being wise, as the word says. And then they get to the place of feeling substandard, mm -hmm. that they have disappointed God. And if they had just done these certain things, they could have become victorious. And then they can almost get jealous, envious uh, of other people. Pastors go through this. Look at their churches growing so much. Mine's not. What's wrong with me? I love God. I pray. I went to seminary. I'm a preacher. I'm experienced. We all look at all these I'ms about me. And that and keeps you in defeat, doesn't it? Keeps you in defeat. Yes. The more I focus on my report card, be it ever so good, with all the gold stars that we've received by being faithful, 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 Somewhere, Wanda, we have this false belief that we deserve to move up to a certain level or get a certain victory because of what we've done. And I want to tell you what, my identity is not in the state of being I'm in. Whether I have a lot of money in the bank or whether everything's going great in the family or if you're a minister, whether everything's going great in the church, that state of my ministry, business, or whatever is not an indicator of God's love or not necessarily an indicator of his disapproval. We have such a tendency to look at that. And then we'll put these other people up on a pedestal. And then we're going to say, well, what are the four things you did? Again, always back to what you do, what you do, what you do. And it's erroneous. It's a lie. And, and it gets us into jealousy. You can wear yourself out with those how-to books, right? <laughs> I, know, I know. I read so many how-to books. That's right, right. If I'll just fast more, yeah. then I will have this. Oh, if we just increase your giving. That $59 you need to be given every month, if you just be faithful, then you would have this and that. And, you know, that's just not true. That's saying an old covenant paradigm that says you have to do something to become something. In the new covenant, through what we've been given in Christ, we become righteous, a new creation. And as Peter says over in 2 Peter, we've been given all things that pertain to life and godliness the moment we believed. Yes. Just like Abraham. Once he believed what God said, that his offspring would be as the stars of the sky and the sand of the sea, and he accepted what God wanted to do in giving him a child, he was called righteous just by believing. In other words, God gave him an I am, not a you will become when you. Right. All you had to say is I receive it. And then when they cut the covenant, God put him asleep. Yes. Instead of him having to do something, he simply was the recipient of a covenant, I believe, made between God and God. Between the smoking furnace and the fire, it was God and God. Yes. And that's us today. And you said God gave him an I am. Yes. Will you, will you explain that a little bit? Sure, sure. <clears throat> One of the greatest things that God said to Abraham was, I will be your exceeding great reward. Yes. And you will be, Abraham, made righteous simply by believing me. So the I am is, I'm given a new identity that I didn't earn, I didn't pay for, I could never accomplish something to get it, I don't compare myself with somebody else. I am given Wanda a complete gift that is undeserved. And then that not only just gives me the gift, it gives me a new identity. Right. 
I could say at the end of a court case, well, after we come out of court, you don't have to pay that fine. But then if my lawyer can come back and tell me, hey, Mr. Montgomery, not only do you not have to pay that $500 fine, you're declared innocent as if it never happened. Yes. Uh, as we look on the back of the serve pro truck, right. like it never happened. Wanda, that's justification. And Abraham was made just. And what started our whole reformation in the 16th century was Romans 1, 16 and 17. That the gospel is the power of God unto salvation unto those that believe. That, and from Habakkuk, uh, the just shall live by faith. Yes. The just is being made righteous. That's my identity. That's who I am. I'm made right with God. I don't have to attain anything. Now, Wanda, if I'll find my I am, I am righteous, I am loved, I am victorious, I am special, I have His peace. If I'll live out of my I am first, then my I do's are my performance, which is important, yes. will come second. And then I have to compare myself. You see, in the garden, God said He made man in His image and likeness. He didn't say in His likeness and image. He said in His image, who you are, your I am. He said, I want you to see, Adam, your I am, and then your likeness, what you do, comes out of who you are. Right. And once I start to do that, then it's a natural overflow of who I am. I believe this is the Godhead. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father loves the Son. The Son loves the Father. The Son and the Father love the Spirit. The Spirit I mean, it's this flow. It's like the grace of the Trinity. Really, grace, Wanda, is the power of influence. God influences me by giving me His love. Well, they influenced each other. There was grace going on before there was ever a human being. And so they had the flow of their love, and it overflowed in saying, let us make man. That is awesome. It's out of our love. Yes. He said, i got to do six things to please the Holy Spirit over here, says Jesus, so that, you know, he'll accept my plan to want to create the earth and the universe. No, I believe it was an overflow, and Adam when he was created, it was the same way. He lived out of his I am. You are made, Adam, in my image, and I'll blow my breath, my life into you. You'll live out of who you are. But who stopped that? The enemy is the arch enemy of just the opposite because he's all into you've got to do something to become. And it started, Wanda, in Isaiah, the 14th chapter, when he said, I will rise up against the throne. I will sit on the sides of the north. I will ascend above God. He's, he's doing. Yes. I will do something to become. And that's where he fell. But when Adam was in the garden, he said, I already am. Yes. But the enemy snuck in and <coughs> brought the same lie to Adam and Eve that he had brought forth before any of us were ever created, saying, I must become, and it's called pride. Yes. It's pride. Yes. So God already is the great I am, and the enemy is trying to do things to become right. an I am. Yes. And he tries to get us into that cycle of trying to become something that God has already said we are. And mm -hmm. um, so it was interesting when you're talking about Abraham, it's that God placed within him his destiny. Yes. And he was able to say, I am the father of nations. Yes. Because God. God, the great I am, imparted that I am to him. Absolutely. And so that's how we are able to say, I am victorious or I am righteous. Absolutely. And those kinds of things. And then, you know, we were talking earlier um, before the show started about how sometimes people who are in defeat can look at other people who are victorious mm -hmm. and it's, it's really that people are in different stages of their life right. of realizing that mm -hmm. they are victorious. And you can realize in the midst of defeat 
that you are victorious over yes. that. Yes, you can. And then begin to move toward that victorious living. Mm -hmm. And um, we were talking about the lady who was on the front page of the paper. Yes, yeah, um, Her name is Brandy Audrey. And one day in her life, she was in jail and she was having mental problems and she had lost, she would lose her child um, because of, of being on drugs and those kinds of things. So mm -hmm. her, her life was in defeat. However, just a few days ago, she was on the front page of the LaGrange Daily News <laughs> being celebrated as a, a success. Yes. Her life was in success and she um, has overcome that drug problem. Mm. She Wonderful. has just gotten custody of her child back. And so, you know, sometimes in life it looks, it looks bad. Mm -hmm. And you can, can, you can stay in that state and continue in your thinking right. that this is bad. This is the way it's always going to be. I am a failure. Right. Or you can realize that it looks bad right now. Mm-hmm but it's not going to always be that way. And, Absolutely. And you know, it's amazing yes. to me how things can look so bad, but really in a short time, mm -hmm. they can turn around. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, lots of times you can say, um, let's see what the next 24 hours brings. Yeah. And sometimes it's surprising. I mean, if you put it in the hands of of God and say, Lord, I just trust you in this. And, Amen. And I'm just going to wait to see what you're going to do right. with this. And you give it to him. Then sometimes it is very quick that you come up out of those things. And, yes. and when you get the picture of I am victorious and begin to walk in, in that, Amen. then your behavior changes. Mm -hmm. And when your behavior changes, the environment changes because People can't act the same way around right. you That's when right. you are different. That's right. It just doesn't work anymore. All those things that have pulled you down mm -hmm. just don't work anymore. That's right. Yeah, I wonder that's so true. What you're saying there is living life out of your position, not your condition. Yes. And you see, who heard the great I am any stronger than Moses? And he must have felt totally defeated. Forty years on the back of the desert, I'd killed a man. Uh, we don't know when he started stuttering, uh, but he might have been so shaken by all this, ostracized, pushed away, feeling like a, probably like a loser. And when the burning bush starts to light up for him in the middle of the desert, out of that, what does it come? Does it say, you will become something someday when you obey me? No, out of that bush, God says, I am that I am. Yes. It's the greatest answer to a person who's lived like Egypt, where Egypt says with the Pharaoh, if you'll do, if you'll still keep doing, maybe someday you can rise up and be something, but you'll probably stay a slave all your life. Some of the slaves in Egypt will move up to be at least overseers, but you'd have to work and oh, work yes. and work. So it's almost like God saying to Moses, I am that I am. You are right now, Moses, even though you're in the back of the desert, even though you're stuttering, even though you're 80 years old, even though you feel like a failure, the great I am is now going to be your I am. Because when I tell you to go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go, you tell them, I am sent you. Not I will someday be their victor. I am their victor now, even before they cross that Red Sea, I'm their victor right now. So here's what I say, Wanda. I proclaim to people who are bound and feel like losers and nothing's going to change and I have no fulfillment, so thus I got to go smoke a joint, I've got to go get high, I got to get drunk, I got to get into pornography, whatever, something to, to kind of like the old advertisement says, uh, how do you spell relief? Yes. Well, we want to spell it J-E-S-U-S. But see, here's Moses started to find out, I am, in essence, victorious now. So one of my ministry is all about, let my people go from I have to do to become to I am that now, and then out of that I am, image and likeness, Yes. then I will start to become what God wants me to be. It's all about what I believe about myself. 
And see, the Apostle Paul had this hit him square between the eyes, this very concept. Here he had gone up to the third heaven in 2 Corinthians 11th chapter and gotten this wonderful revelation of the finished work of Christ, that it is the whole victory is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's a whole new I am. Yes. Well, the old, co or the old covenant is you got to do to become. Now the new covenant is you already are and you live out of that. So he gets this picture, but Wanda, he starts to pray and say, God, this thorn in the flesh has come against me over and over again. I'm praying, God, please let this come off of me. We've taught it was a demon. We've taught it was his blindness. Maybe he was bowed over from being whipped. Mm -hmm. It was none of those things. It was preachers. It was the Judaizers. If you read in 2 Corinthians 11, it was all about how they were persecuting him. They were getting the victory. They were looking like they had the winning. Because every time he'd go into a place and preach, they're right behind him. They had more money. They had more clout. They were able to draw these people in. In one place, Paul said, we've seen converts in Asia. Then another place he says, we have none in Asia. And I think the reason he yeah. said that was the Judaizers were boom, Johnny on the spot. You've got to be circumcised. You've got to do the feasts. You've got to eat kosher food. You've got to do this. Yeah, you yeah, receive Jesus, but you've got to do all these things to be something in the kingdom. And he says, nix, that is wrong. You are already that in Christ. But then he said, here we go back to our theme. God, why are you letting these people beat me and whip me and stone me? I, I've gotten a revelation. I, you took me to heaven. These guys are preaching a lie. And yet they're ahead of me. Why? Why? And here's the answer. It was the answer to Moses. It was the answer to, G, to uh, Paul. Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is perfected in weakness. When everybody else gets the applause, when they look like they're prospering and you look like you're being diminished, I've got something for you. It is the victory is yours when nothing is changed on the outside. I am, what he said to Abraham, I am your reward. I am your victory. Don't you start saying, as we would to the girls in the jail, I'll be victorious when I get out of there. Here's when they'll get victory, is when they start declaring it when they're still incarcerated. Or the guy I love so much that was brought to our church yes. years ago, Mike Quarles, 54 years old before he got out of alcoholism, had pastored three churches, thrown out of all of them, and he tried to do so many I becomes. Well, we'll try to church discipline. Well, we'll try AA. Well, we'll try this program. Well, we'll go up to Ridgecrest and Smyrna and stay there for a month. And I'll try faith confession. I'll try. All those are good things. But see, they were all I'll try to do to become. One day he was driving I-20 between Atlanta and Birmingham. And the Lord said, pull over. And he pulled over on the road. Open your Bible, uh, Mike. And he opened to Romans 6. And this doesn't happen to everybody. Don't you folks out there try to <laughs> imitate this. I'll just open my Bible and hope something comes up. Yes. That doesn't always work. <laughs> but anyway, he had a word from God, a rhema. Right. He opened and his eye fell on Romans 6, 7. It says, he that is dead with Christ is free from sin. Mike sits there and says, I have already been free from alcohol. That's an I am. And did not know it. I'm going to act like the word is true. I'm going to take the great I am rather than the great I need to be. And I'm going to walk in this thing. He is now 78 years old. He hadn't had a drink for all those years and has helped thousands of men and women come out of their alcoholism, their drug addiction, their pornography addiction, whatever it is, because he said, let's start declaring the I am. He was the first one I heard, Wanda, who would say, you're sitting there lighting up a joint. You're sitting there uh, getting a line of cocaine. Yes. And at that moment, sounds crazy, it says, declare, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Now, is what you're doing righteous? No. Is it still sin? Yes. But you'd start declaring who you are. And listen, Wanda, he has a book of testimonies, a book. When guys started doing this, maybe it's just they want to quit smoking or whatever it is, they'd start to declare, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. They'd begin to declare thy I am. What's the Holy Ghost do? He convicts you of righteousness and starts showing you this other is not who you are. That's Start right. living out of your I am. Yes. Next thing you know, they're throwing the stuff down. They're saying, I don't want that. That's not who I am anymore. Yes. The victory starts to come, just like you said. We think, it's, we think the victory is when the circumstances change. 
No, the victory is in Christ Jesus. That's he right. won it for us at the cross. He said uh, at the end of 1 Corinthians uh, 15, he said, in essence, I give you the victory as a gift. Thanks be unto God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And, you know, I'm just thinking about that. I am the great I am. Yes. But, you know, this just brings new light to I am. Yes. The righteousness of Christ, you know, and it's, it's just so exciting. And, you know, we talked about that statement. I am who the great I am says I am. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's just really um, drilling that in as, as you're talking about, you know, we are made in his image and likeness. And so I am is a part of who we are. <laughs> I mean, it is who we are. It is who it we is are. It is who we are, not yes. a part of who we are. It is who we are. And Wanda, it's not Wanda and Alec's life improved. Right. It's a brand new life. He got rid of Alex and yes. Wanda at the cross. So now I can say, I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things, what's the old things? I got to do to become. Now it is, I already am that, and I live out of that. I walk in that. And that's what Jesus said. It says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Yes. In other words, I'm not trying to live an improved life. Wanda, I don't want an improved life. I don't want any part of my old life. I tried to fix my life, change my life, do this to my life, and I was a miserable failure. Yes. But when I come back now and realize I'm living the life of another, it's not Christianity. Let's get in there. God's saying, now, here's a list of all your deficits. And here's a list of all the things I want you to do to get out of those deficits. And when you do, I'll bless you. That's an Old Testament yes. paradigm. No, he says, I've taken your defeats. I've taken your old stuff. I've given you a whole new, brand new I am. You're as righteous as Christ. You have the same love as Christ. You have the same power as Christ. That was Paul's prayer in Ephesians 1. The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The hope of our calling. Pray this, Ephesians. Yes. This is praying who you are and that he's under your feet. He's defeated already. I don't have to do something to make him defeated. And so when we get into this place, Wanda, it liberates us. Then I'm out to compare myself to Brother Jones's church. Uh, I'm already victorious. Right. And, and it's not just something you concoct of positive thinking. This isn't a theory. This is living. This is daily life, right in the face of your biggest challenges. You're making this declaration of the I am like Moses did. And then you begin to bring forth the behaviors that are like Christ. I had an old golf teacher years ago, I probably said this before, I was playing on the high school golf team, and this guy was a great golfer, he was a scratch golfer, he didn't even have a handicap. And, and so he'd say, he was trying to show me how to fade a ball. And so he'd get up there and show me and said, look, here's what you do with your grip. Here's what you do with your swing. And I'd try to imitate him, and I'd hit it to the left instead of to the right. He'd say, all right, let's do it again, Montgomery. Come on, let's try it. And he'd try it, and yeah, it didn't work. And so he got so frustrated with me. And then this was back in the 60s, and Jack Nicklaus was the big thing then. And so he turned to me and says, if I could just get Jack Nicklaus's ability to jump in you, because you can't do what I'm showing you to do, if I could just have Jack Nicklaus jump on the inside of you, maybe you could get it right, Montgomery. And I thought about that way later when I got saved. Yes. That's Christianity. It is. <laughs> See, what if I could have had Jack Nicklaus jump into me? Then what I would do, this is like Star Trek stuff, <laughs> I'd say all of a sudden, I'm going to yield to his ability, not try to improve mine. Right. And so now, Colossians 1 27, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now it's not me trying to fix me and become something. It's letting by faith, by faith, believing. You will go back to what you first said. You said, well, how did Abraham have that I am? By believing. Yes. So today, Wanda, it's the obedience of faith, not faith to get obedient. You know, like, I just believe that someday I'll get obedient, and when I get obedient, then I'll become something. Then God will bless me. Then God will help me. Then I'll be like Brother Jones. Then I'll have my healing. Then I'll get the victorious in my business. All that stuff is not true. The obedience of faith is saying, my obedience is to believe. Yes. Believe I already am those things. And even this, Wanda, watch this. Even to believe that those works 
that I'm going to do. They're even provided by God. Right. We are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before prepared <laughs> that we should walk in them. <laughs> That's right. Well, not only has He prepared the new identity, He's even prepared my behavior. So what's it make me do? Rest. Yes. I don't have to compare myself. They're prettier and more handsome. They're, they got more than I do. Oh boy, what do I need to do to be like them? Here's the peer pressure that high school kids go through. This is the pressure that young marrieds go through. I've got to have a house like them. When we lived in Tulsa, Oklahoma, I was in between my mid-20s and mid-30s. And we'd ride up and down the road and look at all these big mansions. Here I am making less than a high school teacher, and yet I'm teaching college, had almost a PhD, and yet I'm sitting there coveting what everybody else had. And then in my mind thinking, oh boy, if I could be like them, oh, maybe someday, I wonder what things I have to do. Gee, I better get up closer to the dean and get him to like me more. Then maybe they'll give me a raise. See how manipulation comes yes. into this? Comparison comes into this thing. And then you start lying. And then when it doesn't happen, you feel like, I'm just a failure. That's what the Apostle Paul was. And God said, through Jesus, my grace is sufficient. Want a sustaining grace is as powerful as healing grace on any day of the week. I'm sustained. A little girl on the front page of the paper, I believe she'd be sustained until she'd see that victory. But in the meantime, she's not falling apart saying, I'm a loser. I'm no good. Nobody will ever love me. I'm not accepted. I don't even like myself. You don't have to say that stuff anymore. Yes. You change your internal dialogue yes. to victory. And, and so it's the good fight of faith, isn't it? That's great. Yes, it, it is. It is. It and, is. And, and so it's when we feel unloved that we say, I am right. loved. That's right. Or when we feel that defeat, we say, I am a victorious Absolutely. overcomer. So I would just like to uh, say to you out there that we thank you for fighting the good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. And if you're in the midst of battle, remember that you are already victorious in God and trust him with your life. Thank you for watching. You make the difference because you really do. Got a promise from heaven. It's a year of replevin. Got a promise from